So it's indeed an honor to be able to uh, share with you uh, a tribute to, to Howard Butt, Jr. I do realize as I get going this morning that if you have never heard of Howard Butt, you may be asking that question, Howard Butt, really? And the answer is yes, and, and proudly so. Now, if you're from Texas, you need no introduction, because you know the name of Howard E. Butt, principally from the association with the Howard E. Butt Grocery Company, or HEB. HEB is the largest grocery company in Texas, uh, employs now something like 80,000 people. It is also one of the largest privately held companies in America. Uh, Texans love HEB, and that is the truth because of a long, long commitment to excellence in product and in customer service and to community involvement. Howard Butt Jr. has been vice chairman of HEB for many, many years. The company has been brilliant, brilliantly led by his brother, Charles Butt. If you're in your 80s and you grew up in the South, you may very well know Howard Butt as the person who introduced you to Jesus Christ. In the late 1940s, when Howard was a student at Baylor University, he and other, a number of other Baylor students became involved in evangelistic crusades throughout the South, these Youth for Christ rallies, in which literally tens of thousands of young people were introduced to Christ. And Howard was one of the chief evangelists in that group. Later on, he became associated with Billy Graham and was active in many of Billy's crusades in the 50s. Howard's evangelistic gift, though, led to one of the great crises of his life. A Baptist boy with such a gift for preaching was surely called to the ministry, right? He was to be a preacher, right? And Howard actually entered seminary. Uh, to seek and discern what his particular calling was. In time, as he wrestled with the question, would it be ministry or the family business, ministry or the family business, he came up with what at that time was an extraordinary answer, ministry in and as the family business, the family business as ministry. Now, I recognize that for many of us in this room, that's not a surprising answer, but in Howard's day, virtually nobody thought that way. And in fact, his work in the grocery company and his advocacy of the ministry of common work, if you will, uh, got him in a lot of trouble. Many Christian leaders were threatened by this. He had the gall to suggest that what uh, ordinary Christian folk, the laity, do each day means as much to God as the thing that pastors and preachers and missionaries do. And it was a, a difficult struggle in that time, but Howard was faithful to the conviction that what Scripture teaches and we need to live out is what he would call the ministry of the laity, not just in the church gathered, but in the church scattered. Now, if you get around in certain Christian circles, you know Howard Butt, uh, by his association with Laity Lodge. Laity Lodge is a retreat center in the hill country of Texas, founded in 1961 by Howard and by his family. Laity Lodge committed to the renewal of the laity, a place where God's people could discover who they are as ministers of God and live out their life in, tr in a transforming way in the world. Since that time, Laity Lodge has sponsored hundreds and hundreds of retreats focusing on the very kinds of questions we're dealing with here. What does it mean to be called? What does it mean to be a, a servant of others? What does it mean to be God's minister in the world? In the classic description of J.I. Packer, who has spoken at Laity Lodge for over five decades, Laity Lodge helps to answer the question, now that you are a Christian, what does it mean to be human? And we've been working on that question under Howard's leadership for many years. If you ever heard Howard speak, or if you've read one of his many books, including The Velvet Covered Brick, you know that he has been exceptionally candid about his own struggles in life, in particular his struggle with clinical depression. Howard wrestled with that as a young man, and he was brought to a place of deep despair. In that place of darkness, he discovered God's grace 
in part through the ministry of psychiatry. Today we're familiar with depression. I expect we all know people who struggle with this. I expect we uh, see how God's gifts in the medical community can make such a difference. But in Howard's day, depression was largely unknown. But what was known in Christian circles is that good Christians didn't have this problem. And when Howard began to share openly his struggle, once again, it cost him many friends, many ministry opportunities. But he felt compelled and convicted to share openly the reality of his life, his story, the reality of God's grace, and to hold those things together. And since 1961, Lady Lodge has been a place for that kind of conversation, a place where people can find God's grace, can hear the gospel proclaimed, can be open about who they are, and discover in the community of like-minded believers, and in many cases unbelievers, discover God's grace and healing. If you listen to the radio, you might associate the name Howard Butt with radio spots that have played millions and millions of times throughout the country. For more than a decade, these 60-second spots have encouraged Christians and others to discover the high calling of our daily work. It's the Christian faith work message packaged for all who might listen. Howard believed and believes that it is through helping people to discover deeper meaning of their work, not only where their lives be enriched, but they will be drawn to the God who gives ultimate meaning to work and to the gospel of Jesus Christ that redeems all things. If you're not a radio listener, but if you uh, get on the internet once in a while, you may also associate the high calling with the digital outreach of the H.E. Butt Foundation. For many years, we have been sponsoring online stories of people living out their faith in the context of daily life and especially the workplace. And we publish devotionals and stories and articles and videos and things to encourage the, the very uh, matters that are so close to our heart in this gathering. And though Howard Butt himself has hardly touched a computer, he saw that the future was going to be digital and got behind the digital outreach so that we might be on the front wave of that. So much more could be said about Howard Butt. I could talk about his helping to found Christianity Today, or his leadership of the National Prayer Breakfast, or his participation in the first National Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, because HEB was at the forefront of racial inclusivity. I could describe his leadership of the Layman's Leadership Institutes, the National Congress on the Laity, the Lady Lodge Leadership Forums, and all. But none of these really get at Howard the man. If you've been blessed to know Howard, but then you know what an exceptional human being he is. His faith is utterly contagious. His love for the Lord inspires. His concern for every single individual is legendary. And if you ever spent 10 minutes with Howard Butt, you know that you felt like you were the most important person in the world for those 10 minutes, and you were the most important person in the world to Howard in that period of time. Though Howard is very much alive today, he is unable to travel to events like this, but if he were here, we would all feel it. We would feel his enthusiasm, his excitement, his joy in what is happening here. And Howard would want us to know that we are at the very center of God's work in the world and that God is doing great things among us and that there are so many greater things yet to come. And then if Howard were here today, he would want to sing the doxology. And I'm not kidding. I cannot tell you how many times I've sung the doxology with Howard in big meetings and little meetings and sometimes in our one-on-one -on -one meetings. And he would want to sing the doxology because his heart would be filled with praise to God. And he would want, above all, for God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to receive the glory for his life, for his work, for our common work. In the end, it's not about glorifying any one individual, but it's about giving glory to God. And so in honor of Howard, I'd invite you to stand, and we will sing the doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son. 
Son, and Holy 